Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, for sports fans, in the rest of our lives, when we think about professional team sports, we understand that there is a huge difference, huge, between the level of play for our local high school football team the level of play at the college football level and the level of play in the big leagues, right? No matter how good our local high school baseball team or high school football team looks, no matter how good they look, no matter what their record, they could be unbeaten on the season. I think most of us intuitively know that if our local team were to play a major league baseball team or a national football league team, a professional level, professional league team, that that local high school team would get crushed, right? For every Reggie Bush on a high school level, there is an older, wiser, more battle-tested, savvier Reggie Bush on a pro level. And no matter how good the local high school coach is in football, let's say the local high school coach is innovative, has several wrinkles in his offense, keeps the other high school coaches guessing, it's very unlikely that that local high school coach has the resources available uh, or the level of athletes on the team that someone like New Orleans Saints head coach Sean Payton has at the pro level, right? So we wouldn't confuse an unbeaten record in high school with an unbeaten record in the pros, right? What Tom Brady is doing in the pros is much more meaningful the statistics matter a lot more than they do for the local high school football player, no matter how dominant statistically that high school player is. For some reason, in boxing, we forget that. We look at a fighter's record and we say, oh my God, this guy is 10 and 0. He's 20 and 0, or he's 20 with three losses. And we think that somehow that means he's ready to fight a guy who's held championship level belts, a guy who's been on TV numerous times, even if when he was on TV, he lost to championship level elite competition, right? For some reason, we feel that up and comers who have fought a list of people we don't even know whose names we can't pronounce are ready to fight and are viable opponents for a world-class level fighter who we know and have watched against other world-class competition in numerous fights. Now let's talk about today's fight between Albert Mensah of whom little is known, but he has a great record. Great record, right? Albert Mensa and Michael Cassidis, right? Many people are looking at Cassidis as someone who has lost three of his last four fights. There's an article on ESPN right now uh, that says that even Cassidis doesn't know what he has left. And, of course, Cassidis, who was fighting at 135 pounds, is now fighting at 140 pounds against a guy with a great record. And so we wonder if the weight gain is going to affect Michael Cassidis, right? It's an open question on who wins the fight. Cassidis is favored, but some people feel that against a young up-and-comer, Cassidis is exactly the kind of overripe, low-hanging fruit that might be picked by the young fighter, right? Now, all I can say is, you've got to be kidding me. I like Michael Cassidis big 
in this fight, even with the fact that there is a near complete absence of video on Albert Mensa. Right? There's hardly any video to review on Albert Mensa. There's only about a minute of video that I've come across on YouTube on Albert Mensa. But here's what I see, and here's why I'm picking Michael Casitas in this fight. Mensa looks like he keeps his hands low to me. In fact, it looks like he keeps his hands too low. Now, some fighters at an elite level can get away with that. Sergio Martinez often has his hands dangling below his waist. Take, take a look at Carl Froch when he gets on a roll. You know what? Even his lead hand is dangling below his waist. But those are elite level proven fighters. Right? Those are fighters who have figured out angles. Who, you know, have done so against opponents who quite frankly either have had belts or have been major contenders. When I see a guy who doesn't have that background, who doesn't have that pedigree, when I see a young fighter, and by the way, Mens is not that young, but that's another story. When I see a young fighter with his hands too low, that fighter looks like he's just red me for a more experienced veteran. And more importantly, in the one minute up film, that I've seen on Albert Mensa, I'm noticing that he gets caught up in shootouts. The video shows robust exchanges. He's not just a guy who keeps his hands too low. He's a guy who literally can't control distance in the ring. Right now, let's think hard about Cassidus's three recent losses. I would argue that in each loss, he was up against a guy with a superior jab, an elite jab, who was a master at controlling distance in the ring. Right? Cassidus' three losses were to Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Quite frankly, I think the Ghost is one of the best in the sport at any weight class. I like the Ghost to beat Selkuk Aiden at 147. And keep in mind, the Ghost has very little experience at 147, right? You're talking about an elite technician. Then, of course, one of the other guys that Cassidus lost to recently, right? These are the guys he lost to. He's lost three of his last four fights. Another guy's Juan Manuel Marquez. <clears throat> now, I don't care how old Juan Manuel Marquez is. All I know is, quite frankly, I thought he beat Manny Pacquiao in the last time they fought. And that's not the only fight he had against Manny Pacquiao that I thought he won, right? You're talking about a guy who's still today able to hop in the ring against elite competition like Manny Pacquiao, pound for pound competition, and not only hold his own, but convince many of us, including Manny Pacquiao's friend Amir Khan, that he beat Manny Pacquiao, right? There are numerous boxing writers who were ringside at that fight who are firmly of the belief that Marquez beat Manny Pacquiao. And keep in mind, as you look at Marquez's record, understand the level of competition he has fought throughout his career, right? He's one of the few men in the world who fought both Manny Pacquiao, and Floyd Mayweather, right? And so you're talking about a guy who's proven who knows how to control distance. And, of course, the last person Cassidus lost to was Ricky Burns. And I'll say this. When you look at the video of the fight, and I thought Cassidus would beat Burns. Burns surprised me here. But if you look at the video of the fight, not only is Burns sticking and moving behind an excellent jab, even Burns' critics concede he has a great jab. But when Cassidus gets Burns on the ropes, and he does, Burns has excellent defense. Right? Burns is able to pretty much completely cover up. Right? Burns 
I would argue that the best part of Burns's game is his exemplary defense. Now, I don't see that in the one minute and a few seconds of video that I've encountered on Albert Mensa. Not only that, as I did some research into Mensa's record, I found that his record was inflated. Right again, a win is not a win. You have to ask yourself, who did the guy beat? Did you know that 11? I don't even have enough fingers, folks. 11 of Mensa's opponents were making their pro debuts. Think about that. Literally, 11 of Mensa's opponents had zero professional fighting experience before fighting Mensa. Now his big win was over a Canadian fighter who fights out of Chicago, Andre Georges. And let me just say this, even that win has to be questioned. For those who don't know, Georges beat Leonardo Tyner and beat Demarcus Corley. Two guys who have fought big names. Marcus Corley has fought Marcus Maidana, for example. I believe he fought Floyd Mayweather. I know he spars with Mayweather. I know that Leonardo Ty Tyner uh, fought Saul Alvarez, right? Well, Gorgeous beat both of them, right? And then lost to Mensa. So people are saying, hey, this shows Mensa can beat quality opposition. But understand. Both of Gorgeous's wins were split decision wins, right? His style isn't that judge friendly. More importantly, he fought a guy who was 5-0 and oh in his career in a six-round fight. And Gorgeous actually lost that fight by four rounds on each of the judges scorecards. Then when that guy, who's an unknown fighter, fought his very next fight, he got knocked out early. Right? When you look at the film of Gorges against Mensa, they're just throwing hooks. Neither guy looks like he can control distance that much in the ring. Right? And so... My point is simply this. It's not about record. It's about style. It's about effectiveness. Right? When I see a world-class fighter, even one who's lost three of his last four, who's gaining weight from 135 to 140, when I see a world-class fighter who's proven, who actually had his moments against Marquez, knock Marquez down, who hits hard, who has the stronger punch, and he's gaining weight to fight a guy who, quite frankly, has fought 11 guys making their pro debuts. I'm a skeptic of the opponent. Right? We'll even go further. Mensa doesn't have a big punch. He doesn't have a huge knockout percentage. And that's against very questionable opposition. Now, in boxing, often you'll have a ringer. You'll have a great fighter who early in his career, for whatever reason, fights a bunch of nobodies to build up his record. Look at George Foreman's early career, right? Foreman obviously had championship level skills, but Foreman wanted to make sure that he had a great record as he came up through the ranks, right? Or at least the people supporting Foreman, right? When you see a guy fighting this low level of opposition like Mensa has, Either he's a great fighter who has money behind him and they want to ensure that he's unbeaten so that when he gets to the meat and potatoes part of his career, he has the unbeaten record and, you know, at minimal risk. Either he's that fighter or he's a pretty pedestrian fighter who literally has been carefully guided to a big payday, right? 
We'll find out early in this fight which one Albert Mensa is. I question whether he's George Foreman. The film clip I've seen, it's short. I'm not here to say I've seen a lot of film on the guy. It's short. But the film clip I've seen makes him look limited. In fact, it makes him look like the low-hanging fruit for Michael Casitas. I'm taking Casitas in this one. I'd be surprised if any guy who doesn't have a big punch, who leaves his hands as low as Mensa leaves his hands, has a viable opportunity against Michael Casitas, who is a big puncher. Let me also point out, too, that when an older fighter gains weight, like Casitas is, right, at this point in his career, you really have to ask yourself, has he been draining himself artificially to lose weight for years Right. If you look at Bernard Hopkins, who was 160 for years, and if you look at him toward the end of his run at middleweight against Jermaine Taylor, both of those fights, you're going to see that Hopkins looks far less energetic than he looked at 175 after he gained weight late in his career against Antonio Tarver and Kelly Pavlik. You could tell that the fact that Hopkins could actually eat a little bit more didn't have to drain himself to, you know, stay at 160. Could actually have dessert. Actually helped his game late in his career. That might be the case with Michael Casitas. While I'm a skeptic of older fighters who lose weight to fight at a lower division. Right? Some pull it off. Anthony Mundine. But I'm a skeptic of that. I'll look the other way. I don't mind if a fighter gains five pounds like Casitas does at this stage in his career. It might even help him in terms of his stamina as he might be better fed in the ring. Let's see what happens. The fight is televised. It's on ESPN. I'm expecting Michael Casitas to blow out Albert Mensa. I'll be the most surprised man in the room if Mensa isn't exposed. If he's George Foreman, more power to him. I question that. Based on the film I've seen, I'm a skeptic. I like Michael Casitas in this one. I'll be surprised given how low Mensa keeps his hands if this fight goes the distance. I like Michael Casitas in this one. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.